Hello and welcome back to Biker Stuff. Today I am going to show you my new toy. Recently I was in the workshop talking about the Top Don TB6000 Pro Intelligent Battery Charger and I received a few comments and emails asking what the big black thing was behind me. Biker Stuffs Motorcycle Channel About a month ago or so, I bought this SGS SSB 220 grit blasting tank. It is the same as most of the other Chinese blast cabinets, whether it is the Clark, Switzer, Harbour Freight, Sealy, or whatever badge it has on it. They all have the same known setbacks. What I think I will do is show you around mine and explain what changes I have made to it and why. That way, if you want one, it will hopefully give you some ideas of how to make yours better. The first job was to make sure both halves sealed properly. They come with a strip of adhesive foam, but to improve this, I have included a 3mm by 20 strip of vinyl. My idea was to make sure it was completely enclosed. And the next job was to replace the screws and nuts that come in the box with rivet nuts and bolts. There are two reasons for this. Firstly, I can be sure the vinyl seal is squeezed tightly and also if I ever need to remove anything, I just have to remove the bolts. Let me show you inside and why this is important. Those are the M6 rivet nuts all around the base of the tank and to support the legs. If I ever needed to split the tank and I hadn't changed to these rivet nuts, I would need to climb in to hold the nuts still <laughs> while someone else did the unscrewing. I've also put them on the gloves. I thought it would make it easier when, when I needed to replace them, but then I found out that I have to remove the gloves themselves from inside anyway. So it was a job I didn't need to do. While we are inside, I also replaced the fluorescent lamp that came with it with this LED one. The improvement is vast. Some people say the door collects grit in all of these recesses and they cover them with tape. But I have made a clamp to hold a length of 2mm PVC. It allows me to see inside when I'm putting in and taking out and keeps the grit in there too. This was the last modification I did. On the top, as you can see, I fitted these bolts upside down. They used to screw downward with the nuts inside, but I did it this way. By doing it like this, I am able to remove the glass without having to get inside and hold the nuts in place. It is a big tank and if I had to hold every nut in place, if I wanted to remove it, I would need arms as long as my legs. <laughs> the tank comes with these replacement glass protection sheets. The idea is 
When they get pitted and become hazy, you can remove them and stick a new one on. I have stuck this fine stainless steel mesh to the glass. <laughs> My intention is with this being finer than the grit, the glass will be protected. I will find out if this works in time. It does restrict the vision a little bit, but if you look directly down with the light on, you can see adequately well. I'll put the glass back on and you can see how it looks. Another addition I made was to fit these knurled thumb screws to make the cover much easier to remove. When you use a blaster like this, the dust build up inside is huge. The tank comes with this side extraction vent and an inlet over the back. This allows you to attach a vac and pull all the dust out. But as much of it is your grit, you end up throwing it away. I bought this cyclone dust extractor, which fits between the tank and the vac. This is the cheap version. They are normally about 50 to 60 pounds, but this one was only 15. I think because of that, all the holes are different sizes. So I spent a couple of hours making adapters so that everything would fit. They work like this. The vacuum sucks up the middle. That pulls the dust in, <laughs> which gets swirled around and eventually drops to the bottom. My vacuum so far has had almost nothing in it from the few times I've used this tank. I've also made a stand for the bucket to sit on. So it goes wherever the tank goes. While we are on this side, let me show you what I did with the switch. It is the switch for the light but I have added this socket to it. So when the light is switched on, the socket is also powered. That way I can have the vacuum come on when I turn the light on, or if I switch the isolator off, it doesn't. Finally, I made this. <laughs> it's called a metering valve. Let me start by explaining why I did it, then what it does. The tank comes with this. The idea is that you bury it in the grit at the bottom of the tank, connect it to the gun, then when the trigger is pulled and the air passes through, so it sucks the grit up the pipe and blasts it out. Blast us into oblivion. What this does is allows the grit to collect at the bottom of the tank and get sucked back up along this hose and onto the gun. This valve here allows me to add air to the line so that the grit is already aerated when it gets there and will flow easier up the hose. This is one of the things I will be playing with to get my settings right. I also added a T-piece into the air supply hose so that I could have a blowgun. This allows me to clean up the parts before I bring them out. Oh, that wasn't the last thing. I added a pressure regulator here to give me better control at the gun. With this and the air valve below, I should be able to get a good control of the grit once I learn to use it properly. As you can see, I didn't buy a regulator with a moisture trap <laughs> as the air coming in from the other room has already been dried before it got here. 
Really? Honestly, truthfully, and finally, I added this fold-out side table. It has two purposes. If I am blasting more than one item at a time, I can put them on here as I pass them in and out. And second bonus is I can put a mug of tea on here. <laughs> or I can just fold it down and out of the way. <laughs> but a tea table is my favorite choice. Let me give you a quick blast of something to show you it in action and how well the vacuum extraction system works. This is the rear sprocket off of the KM90 I restored. Let me give it a quick blast. <laughs> so this is before. extractor on for a bit just to clear the air in the tank Of course, if I was going to paint this part, I would be wearing gloves. I hope that gave you an idea of what it is like to use and how much you need the vacuum to extract all that dust. <laughs> 
If you want to get something like this, do look around. They range from about £200 for the cheaper brands up to about £600 for the bigger names, despite it being the same product. This one is the SGS SSB 220, and I'm not sponsored to say that. In case you are wondering, I am using aluminium oxide at the moment. I do have a bag of glass beads, but I've not used them yet. Leave me a comment below and tell me what you think I should grip blast next. And don't forget to subscribe. Let's get to the 1 million subscribers together. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I know you liked it, so tell your friends and I'll see you here next time on Biker Stuff.